Hi, it's fall. Uh, and today I did a video and I'm drinking some hot apple cider. Hi, I'm Caribbean Andy. I want to show you easy ways to make better cocktails at home and talk a little bit about my bartending experience on the way. Check out my other videos, like and subscribe, and well, hey, let's see what I'm going to make today. I love apple cider. I always have. Uh, I look forward to the fall weather. I don't know if it's universally the case, uh, probably not around the world, but I, maybe I think most places in the U.S., uh, you know, around fall when you go and you get your pumpkins for carving, uh, maybe you have a, a farm. I grew up, we had a farm called Trax Farms that we would always go to, and that's where we get our pumpkins and our Christmas trees. And when you go there, they also obviously grow apples and they make their own cider, and that cider is available in grocery stores. And I don't know, that's just where apple cider comes from. I've done, uh, I've put apple cider in cocktails and had it on menus before, and we've always just bought it. So, because I honestly just assumed it's far too labor intensive to make your own apple cider for it to be worthwhile. And uh, that's what I set out to do today, uh, to kind of determine whether it's worth it. So, uh, I went to my local farmer's market, picked up some apples, and I made my own hot apple cider. I'm lying. I'm just at the regular grocery store. Yeah, so I'm not at the farmer's market, but the regular grocery store still had a lot of uh, fall stuff. As you can see, mums, pumpkins, and gourds, and also these vegetable chips, which I didn't buy, but I'm still thinking about. Uh, I picked three different kinds of apples to have some variety. I got Honeycrisp. Those are gonna kind of be our main ingredient. They're sweet and tart. These are Fuji here, uh, which are like apple flavored. And then Granny Smith, of course, just like your classic sour apple. This is uh, Trax Farms apple cider. They have this available. It's like $4. They have their own brand of apple cider as well that's spiced. Uh, and there's some other stuff they add to it to help keep it fresh. And also this trail mix, which I put back. Uh, then I was also just wondering like, who goes to the grocery stores and buys all these like fancy pretzels and treats. I walked to the grocery store too. It's a beautiful day, uh, sun, clouds, chilly, warming up though. I'm getting hot in my jacket and uh, yeah, I know it just feels like fall. Sorry, I know that was really close on my face, but I was holding my phone the wrong way. Anyway, uh, if you want to do this along with me, I got 12 apples at the grocery store and I think I spent $3.83. And then ingredients I already had at home that you'll also need uh, just to spice the cider. I used uh, two cinnamon sticks, just the short like three inch ones, a tablespoon of allspice berries, and a teaspoon of cloves. Uh, then uh, just some little shreds of fresh ginger and a few orange peels. Uh, that's it, and the apples. Uh, then you also need uh, either a blender or a food processor, um, some kind of heat source, a stove, I assume. Uh, you have a stove if you're gonna try to do this. And then uh, some way to strain your apple. So I used a nut milk bag, which you'll see in a minute. Uh, excuse me, I've used that in other videos too. Cheesecloth, uh, probably even like a, a fine mesh sieve, uh, whatever, you'll figure it out. Uh, but that's it. Oh, and star anise, two pods of star anise. So with my apples, I figured it similar to like a cocktail breakdown, six honey crisp. It's like our base spirit, four Fuji, it's our modifier, and then uh, two Granny Smith, that's like our, our citrus. Uh, wash your apples. I'm using a little scrub brush. Uh, you want to make sure that they're really clean. We're not going to peel them. We're going to use the skins in this whole process. Uh, I did some reading. Some people suggest you should peel them. Some people say you should not. Uh, I did try my best to get the seeds out uh, and I removed the stems as well, which uh, you'll get uh, live footage of here in just a second. Also remember, uh, it's important when you're removing the stems, it's a really great opportunity to learn who you're going to marry. Uh, the, the proper process is uh, say a letter of the alphabet aloud, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then that tells you 
uh, the first letter of the first name of the person you're going to marry. Now, you can go through and try and spell out their entire name, which means I'm going to marry somebody named Gefug, uh, which I'm really looking forward to, to be honest. You know, um, I've never met a Gefug before, but I can only imagine what kind of person that uh, goes through life with a name like that. So anyway, uh, figure out who you're going to marry with your clean apples and then just roughly chop them up. Uh, as you're going through, you can try and uh, remove the seeds. Uh, some people suggest that the seeds are going to add tannins and make a dry flavor to your cider. I don't know if that's really true. Um, they fall out easily. It's not that big of a deal. Chop them up, get them ready to go, and then just pop them right into your, your food processor or your blender. I'm eating some. You may also find that you uh, want to add some water if you are using a blender, uh, particularly a Ninja Blender like this. Just some water, uh, less than a cup, honestly, just to help loosen everything up and uh, really make a nice puree. If you're using a food processor, this probably won't even be an issue, and you can just do straight apples. Uh, my food processor is uh, its the size, I can only do like a half of an apple at a time, but blend it up onto a nice smooth puree. Uh, and then you can go ahead and just strain that right through your nut milk bag. I just wanted to show you too, like once you squeeze it all out, it's like a, it's like sawdust practically. Can you see that? It's probably a better way I can do this, but it's like a flavorless, almost moisture free mush. It's gross. Just real quick. This is all of the cider. I'm staring at my face. Uh, just real quick. This is all of the cider. Uh, it's just shy of two liters, and honestly, I didn't even work that hard to make sure I got all of the liquid out. Um, you can turn, you can probably get more than that from 12 apples, but I'd say six apples to a liter, probably a pretty good guess. I, I am trying some of it just as is. It's so delicious. So once you have your cider all strained, you want to heat it. Uh, bring it to at least 160 degrees. You don't really want to go over 180 though because you don't want to cook it. You just want to kill off any uh, germs or bacteria that could possibly be in there. And then while that's heating, you can go ahead and toast your spices. Okay, here's the part where we uh, bring in the spices I was talking about earlier. We want to toast our spices. This is something I learned from a uh, chef making fun of me for not toasting cinnamon when I infused a spirit with it. Just put it right in the fire there. Wash your fingers. It's probably a bad idea. Um, I don't know, I just thought that made it fun. But dry pan, uh, bring it to a nice heat, put the allspice berries and cinnamon in there, let that go. With your cloves, you wanna put those in last minute. Um, they're a bit oily and they will actually start to smoke much sooner than the rest of the spices. But again, uh, I've done this in other videos. You basically just do it until it smells ready. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's that. And then now that I've cleaned my nut milk bag, I put all my spices in there and uh, the ginger and the orange peels that I mentioned, I actually forgot those when I initially did it, but went back and fixed it a few minutes after I finished filming. Oh, there's my floor, all the stuff I moved out of the way so I wouldn't get it in the video. Put a lid on it and uh, yeah, just let that steep for about uh, 30 to 45 minutes. Okay. So this is delicious. Um, I'm pretty sure it's also safe. I think I spent I spent under four dollars for twelve apples. So it is a little bit more cost effective. I had all of the spices already, uh, but considering your time, like it's not gonna. I'd say it's not really gonna save you money to make your own apple cider. It's more about the process and being able to say that you made your own apple cider. Also. Uh, I, don't, I read that just like bringing it up to a hot enough temperature is enough to make it pasteurized and kill bacteria. I don't know. I do. This doesn't have the same color quality as when you buy it from the store. I don't know if what I'm drinking right now is safe. I don't know. I feel pretty good about it. I'm pretty proud of what I've done here today. And uh, you can definitely, there are great recipes out there for cocktails with apple cider. Mess around with it on your own. But... I think the best bet is just throw a little booze in here. Uh, I, rye whiskey is probably my choice. Uh, a lot of people might suggest using like a, a Calvados, a, apple brandy, bourbon. 
uh, even rum, whatever you like. Uh, just just throw some booze in your in your hot apple cider. Drink it all day long. Happy fall. If you enjoyed this video, please do make sure you hit the thumbs up down below and uh, subscribe for more content similar to this. Cheers. This is really good. I was just, I just made this hot again to pretend to drink it for this video, but I'm probably not gonna do it. It is chilly. Outside, it's chilly outside. The cider's warm.